Hello everyone, it's Leo, and in this video we are going to check out a special interview with Kingetsu Ryunosuke, who's responsible for the series composition of Hirogaru Sky Precure. This interview was published on Animage, and it was translated by Inu, Climate, Notre, and Hibiki. So thank you all very much for providing us with the translation, because this interview is a super interesting one. It was titled as The Perspective and Ideas from an External Script Writer's Point of View. Kingetsu is someone who never worked on Precure before, so he will obviously bring lots of new ideas and fresh takes to the franchise. This interview is an in-depth look at certain parts of the production of Hirogaru Sky, answering things like why we don't know the motives of Under Empire yet, why Cure Butterfly took this long to join, why is the lead Cure Blue, and other curious things that the fandom has been talking about lately. Another thing that's important to point out here is that this interview was published a little before the Cures went to Skyland that happened in episode 14. So let's start. The first question was, how did you feel when you received the offer to compose the series? Kingetsu answered, Since I am not a script writer who grew up with Precure, I wondered, am I the right person for the job? That was my first thought. When I heard that Ogawa-san, who is the series director, with whom I worked for two years on Gegege no Kitaro season 6, had asked me to do it, I thought, I have to do it. I had no choice but to accept. The person who had given me a job offered me another one. This is the greatest joy of a freelance worker, and that is what I am working for. I thought it would be interesting to entrust the composition to someone who was not brought up in the Precure culture, and I thought that they might be looking for an outsider's point of view and ideas. Another question was, what elements were decided when you joined the project, and what were your thoughts from there? Kingetsu answered, The proposal we received contained three concepts. Diversity, princess, and cool precure. I candidly said, Diversity is important, but isn't it too late to emphasize diversity as a natural element on the same level as, for example, justice, friendship, and kindness? I thought maybe I was being too cocky and I would get fired, but when the producer Washio heard that, he said, Yes, you're right. I thought, oh, it's such an open and comfortable place to work. This is great. It's interesting that Kingetsu mentions diversity here because Hirogaru Sky Precure is a very diverse team. We have uh, members who are from Skyland, we have our first male cure, and we also have our first adult cure. This is a team that is composed of very diverse people, very different people, especially if you look at the Precure franchise as a whole, but it's very interesting that we don't see those diverse points of them being something that makes them different, that makes them stand out a lot. Tsubasa's role of being a boy and Ageha's role of being an adult aren't brought up lots of times, and they are even though they are core parts of their personalities and motives in the series, it's nice to see that what they are doing there is taking this diversity point and working on other aspects of the characters. I feel like that is why the diversity aspect of Hirogaru Sky Precure is present, but it's not the core idea of those characters. It's very interesting to hear Kingetsu talking about that. And he also said, there had already been a series with a similar concept for Princess before, so I thought Cool Precure would be a better choice as a pillar of the series. We also already had Funny Precure and Cute Precure as well. Other than that, nothing was set in stone yet. The characters were thought up by everyone from scratch. Another question was, what did you discuss with Ogawa-san and the other members of the team, and what were you particularly conscious of when deciding on the characterization of each character? Kingetsu said, As I said, I'm an outsider, so I asked a very dumb question. Why is Precure like this in the first place? For example, 
Why does it take place in a town that could be anywhere and start with a good morning, mama? Is it to make it easier for the viewers to imagine the story as their own? I was just trying to make it easier for the viewers to imagine the story as their own. Washio-san and Ogawa-san were very gracious in answering all my dumb and silly questions in details. No, it's not important that the city is not like any other city. It just has to be somewhat like that. So for example, if the story takes place in a world in the sky and the main character gets into trouble early on, is that okay? It's okay. The main character's color is blue, isn't it? That was the starting point for the birth of the blue cure Sora. We placed her in the center of the other characters. And then the interviewer mentioned. So that's how the series' first blue leader character was born. And can get so sad. What we need is a fascinating character, not a pink colored character or a blue colored character. That's why I am personally not so concerned about color. The same goes for gender and age, which was a big topic of discussion. In my works, I don't use symbolic descriptions such as because they're blue, because they're boys, or because they're adults, but rather I try to depict what they are and what they are not from the inside. I'm trying to depict the essence of the girls and their characters from the inside out. And then the interviewer makes another observation. It's unique that we have a protagonist from another world. Mascots usually sought Precure in the past seasons. And King Getsu said, We didn't intend to break the mold at all. I personally thought episode 1 was the one to feature a protagonist, not to explain the setting of the whole season. Normally, in past seasons, mascots explain settings to the audience, saying, How are the affairs of the world like? How are the villains like? And what is Precure? I gave all such roles to Sada and featured her letting her tell her stories by her emotions, actions, and point of view. Thankfully, our producer Washio encouraged me to do so by saying, you don't need to hurry the explanations. This caused Sada to be surprised at the cultural gap as she arrived in Sodashido City. Her exaggerated amazement at the elevator and TV is supposed to be primitive fun that the viewer's kids will understand. Sora's slapstick act, on the other hand, brought the focus to Mashiro, the guide, and allowed us to depict her tenderness. In this way, the story could portray Mashiro's kindness. I really like this answer because it really shows how the story is set up through Sora's point of view, but for us, the viewers, Mashiro's point of view is also important because we see the story the same way Mashiro sees the story because she is the one that's closest to us, the viewers. I really like this interpolation of viewpoints and different points of view being showed all the time to us. Sara and Mashiro are very different and I love that they're taking time to explore that in this season. The interviewer made another observation. In addition, the dialogue is more modern, but there are a few that are old-fashioned, such as when Mashiro often says, TIME! It feels nostalgic. And Kingetsu added, I've explained to the production team that it must keep the vibes of older anime. As we're tackling a theme that tends to get serious and violent, I'm also eager to fill in the gaps with funny dialogue and easy-to-understand gags to balance out the negative mood. In other ways, I'm focused on making sure the children aren't bored or too scared. This is represented by Kabaton's character design. A good-looking man would not do. Here, another observation is made by the interviewer. The characters have goals like Sora wants to be a hero, Tsubasa to fly in the sky, and Ageha to work at a nursery. How did you decide on them? Kingetsu answered. Sora carries the concept of this season of cool precure. Tsubasa represents hardship of pursuing a dream that can't see how to make it come true. Ageha aims to be a nursery school teacher as an adult and a hero that is familiar with kids who watch the show the most. And another question was made. Why is Mashiro the only one without any specific dreams? Kingetsu said, It's intentional. The key word of this season is expanding. Hirogaru. Communicating with others, vision, thought, and the future expands. Mashiro is the one who represents this. I hope you'll be looking forward to the coming stories. 
And the other question was, Cure Prism debuted in episode 4, Cure Wing in episode 9, and Cure Butterfly hasn't appeared as of episode 14. It seems to be taking several episodes for the four cures to get together. King Getsu then answered, We weren't in any hurry to have them all transform into Precure because there wasn't a spring movie this year, but I know I could have chosen the option to have them all there from the beginning to start the season off with a bang. Since the broadcast period lasts for an entire year, the production members wondered what would be the best timing for each cure to settle on the best outcome. Another question was, unlike previous seasons, where they called each other by their cure names as soon as they transformed, this time they called each other Prism and Wing only after recognizing each other as comrades who fought together. Kingetsu answered, Because I'm an outsider, I felt like it was weird for them to refer to each other by their precure names just after transforming. I took advantage of it to make it a dramatic expression. I got some comments such as, we have never seen this before, and it turned the tradition upside down. However, I only meant to do something normal. Another question was, in episode 12, Sara saved Kabaton who was about to be purged by the Underg Empire. Was it because of the focus that sheer strength is injustice, which was mentioned in episode 14? King gets so sad. Exactly. I pay attention not to give kids the wrong message like strong equals great and winning a battle equals hero. That's because Sora is stronger than normal people. For the same reason, I let Kabaton, the villain, yell Tue, meaning I'm strong, many times. And they also asked if Kabaton will return in the future. King gets so sad. He is a character who sets the tone of the season correctly, balancing seriousness and entertainment. I feel so sorry for him. As to if he will come back, it's a secret. I have to stop here and say I really love how Kingetsu talks about Kabaton in this interview. I feel like, at least to me, he was really able to portray Kabaton as he really wanted him to be threatening and funny at the same time, and he was able to find a balance to make him a super interesting character that wouldn't make the kids too scared, but at the same time, it wouldn't make the kids bored because he was always trying his best and creating very creative plans to try and get L and defeat the Precures. And I'm very excited to see Kabaton again. I cannot wait to see what this secret means. Another question was, they surprisingly didn't fight a Lenborg in episode 13. Does that mean that fighting is not the only way to be a Precure? Kingetsu answered, We started producing the episode with the point that one episode without a battle matters paradoxically because the season was themed as hero. Overlapping the backgrounds of Sora and Midori, we rigidly focused on describing Sora and her friends by depicting Midori. Incidentally, it's basically prohibited to create touching episodes by guest characters in this season. Another question was, the way the Underg Empire is depicted is unclear. A mysterious boss gives Kabaton orders only with their voice. The place which is equivalent to villain's hideout is an Oden bar on the street, and it's not clear why they want El-chan's power. Kingetsu then answered, Do you think the kids really enjoyed the so-called villain meeting scenes? Wouldn't you rather watch the precures than spend all the time watching the villains? That's my opinion. Of course, by not depicting the circumstances of the villain side, the story risks of losing its momentum. However, I am sure that I can fill in the gaps by describing the precure side of the story. The villains we have created and the world setting are spectacular. We will gradually expend on them when necessary in a way that will be exciting for the kids. Please look forward to it. I think this is a very interesting and also different approach that Kingetsu is trying to do with the narrative of this season because we have them uh, focusing less on the villains, showing them in action only, and using the time that would be used for us to see the villains, for us to see the cures in action, and the way they, they are dealing with the attacks that are happening on them. I find this refreshing, and honestly, I'm loving it. 
And the last question was, can I get a message for fans and some highlights in the coming episodes? Kingetsu then answers, it might seem that I'm attempting a drastic change for this season. However, that isn't what I intend to do. I just genuinely create entertainment. People have often pointed out that I show homage to the first season. But what I respect from Futariwa is how down-to-earth it is and its attitude going about it. I think that those who watch Hirogaru Sky will start to understand the season's intentions around episodes 8 and 9 when Tsubasa debuts as Cure Wing. In the second core, a fourth Cure will debut, who is Cure Butterfly, and a big incident will occur that will break Sora's heart. I hope you will follow the hero's adventure. This in-depth look at Hirogaru Sky Precure is a very exciting one in my eyes. I love seeing what Kingetsu has to say about the Underg Empire, about the fact that Mashiro doesn't have a dream, about the fact that Sora is a blue cure, and all the changes that they are making to the Precure formula, which aren't their intention, actually. This is very nice that they are bringing a fresh view to the Precure franchise by just bringing their regular ideas, their thoughts, and, you know, the things that they feel they're doing correctly. I am loving Hirogaru Sky, and I love this deep dive into the minds of the production. It's very cool to understand a little more what they're trying to do. Inu, Climact, Hibiki, thank you very much for this translation. It was really amazing. And I hope that this helps us, the fandom, enhance the experience of Hirogaru Sky and makes us enjoy this season even more.